Hello everyone, Ken here back with part five of the data science project from scratch series. In this video, I will use a couple of different models to predict the expected salary of different positions that we scraped from Glassdoor in part two and that we cleaned up in part three. I also did a pretty cool exploratory data analysis in part four that I recommend you check out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and remember to subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted when I post the next segment of this series. Okay, let's get started here. So remember that we're gonna wanna go on uh, and pull all of our GitHub repo. So we're gonna open the git bash, we're gonna, get, uh, we're gonna change into our folder, um, which is this, this, and we're gonna get git pull. That's gonna bring down everything online. And we're gonna create a new branch for our model building. So we're gonna go git checkout B model building. And then we've now created this new branch. So I'm gonna go back to using spider for this use case. I think that that generally makes the most sense uh, when, we're, when we're writing this type of code. I can see how it's run. I can see how things are being published. Again, for exploratory analysis, the Jupyter Notebook really shows things in, in the most effective way. But for, for model building, there isn't as much of a visual element. So I, I think that this spider IDE uh, has a good use case here. All right, now that we've pulled our Git repo, let's actually uh, start planning this out. So first we wanna import pandas um, as pd, import matplot.5plot as plt, import numpy, as np, and load these in. And then let's also just load in our data real quickly. Equals, so let's go to our file explorer, eda data, pd.read, csv, there we go. And then we should have our data in. And then let's think about some of the things that we actually need to do here. So first we need to choose relevant columns, right? Next, we want to uh, get dummy data. So when we're, when we're building one of these models and we have categorical data, we need to make what is known as dummy variables. So for each column, each um, like, um, type of categorical variable. So let's say we have our job simplified, right? So for data scientist, data engineer, machine learning engineer, each of those need their own specific column. So we make a column for each of those and there's a one in the column if they have that attribute. So if you're a data scientist, the data scientist column would have a one in it. And so that you know greatly increases the number of columns in our data frame. So um, that also has some implications on the type of models that we use. So next, we're going to create train test splits. And when we create a train, we create a train test split because we want our models to generalize well. So usually you have a train set, a test set, and a validation set. Uh, I'm sorry, a train set, a validation set, and a test set. So you train and validate, and then to make sure that your models uh, are, are actually effective in the real world, you use that test set. So um, I generally use the test set to test the ensemble models, uh, but I'll show you how I go about doing that uh, in a second here. So the first model we wanna make is a linear, uh, a multiple linear regression. The second one we wanna do is a lasso regression. Um, and we're gonna use a lasso regression because this data set is gonna be so sparse with all these dummy variables. That actually helps us normalize that. <clears throat> the third thing we're gonna do is, let's just do a random forest. So we'll have a tree-based model to compare to our linear models. I think, just judging based on time, that'll be as much uh, as I really wanna do here. But you, know, you could also use a, a gradient boosted tree. You could use a uh, support vector regression. These are other ways that you could actually spice this up a little bit. Uh, after that, we want to um, basically tune, tune these models using grid search CV. 
And then finally, we want to go back through and test uh, ensembles. So let's just start by choosing the relevant columns. We're going to do df.columns here. And we're just going to um, choose the ones that we think are relevant. So we probably want, um, we don't want any of those. We're going to want rating for sure. Well, I'll just put them in like this. Rating. We're going to want um, size. We're going to want um, type of ownership. We are going to want industry, sector. Um, revenue, and then we want num comp. We don't want the actual competitors. We want hourly, uh, employer provided salary, um, company. No, we won't want company tax. We want job state. Uh, same state, age, Python. We're not going to do the R, yes, no, because there are so few. Uh, AWS, Excel, um, job simp, uh, seniority, uh, and description length. And then the most important one, let's include in front, is average salary. There we go. And then let's load these guys in. Perfect. So we have our, oops, that's just, um, oh, we have to make this DF. There we go. I was going to say, that looked kind of weird. Job. That's correct. We need a state. Let's see if this works now. Great. So we have our model data. And then now let's get our dummy data. So a lot of people use like one hot encoder. I think PD get dummies works most effectively. So we're going to do df uh, dumb. And then we're going to df pd.get dummies df model. Great. So as you can see, we went from 20 columns to 178. Let's actually see what this looks like. So the things that were already dummy variables to start, like Python, Spark, AWS, Excel, they remain that. And then we have all these dummy variables for, for example, the different size categories that we had. So you know that's a really good start there. And we can actually start um, kind of doing our model building here. So we're going to go to our handy, uh, handy internet here. Uh, and so SK learn, train, test split. And we're just going to go down and copy this in. Here we go. And then we're going to go back to that page and copy some more stuff in. So we're going to take their train test split code here. And this just creates all of the train test splits that are out there. And so we want to remove this dot, dot, dot. And we have to create our X and Y variables as well. So X is going to equal DF um, dumb dot drop um, average salary axis equals one. Y is equal to DF um, dumb dot average salary dot values. So when you do uh, values there, that makes it so that um, it, it creates it an array instead of a series. So I'll just show you the difference. So if we do that, we see that that data structure is different from this. Uh, and the, the, the latter is what is generally recommended to be used in models. 
So what this is going to do is this is going to give us a train set and a test set. And we're going to split it by 0.2 here instead of 0.3. That means that there's 80% in our uh, train set and 20% in our test set. So we built that out. As you can see, train and test. So we can actually start building our models. So I'm going to do a linear regression in stats models. Uh, using their uh, package and then also in sklearn because I just think it's cool to compare them. So stats models OLS regression. So we have to, all of these have examples which I really like. So let's go down and right here import that. So uh, let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna have to go um, So we're going to do x uh, sm equals to x at constant. So in <clears throat> when you're using stats models, you have to create a constant, and a constant creates the constant in the model. So whenever you have a regression, you're fitting a line to data, right? So you have to have the slope of the line, but you also have to have the intercept. A column of all ones creates that intercept in stats models. So Next, we're going to do um, model equals s m dot ols. Oh, ols it's yelling at me. Um, and then we do y comma x. So we're going to do y comma x underscore sm. Uh, build the model, and then we're going to do model dot fit dot uh, summary and we'll be able to see all of the output here so um, actually I take that back we want to do this on our uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just do it on all the data for right now um, for the uh, SK learn one we're just going to do it on the on the train test split so our R score is pretty good it's around 0.7 that means that our model explains around 70% of the variation uh, in in glass door salaries Right here, the p-value is kind of what we want to focus on. So a p-value of less than 0.05 means it's significant in our model. And let's take a couple look at things. So rating is not, number of competition is. Um, so we look at the, the coefficient. And so for, for each additional uh, competitor, it looks like we would add um, basically two, $2,000 to their salary. salary. Hourly is, and obviously you're making less money if, if you're, um, if you're in that position, and it goes the other way for employee, uh, employer provided. Um, Python, clearly relevant here, but it looks like some of these other scales are, are not. Um, let's keep going down, keep going down, 0.2. So public companies, looks like you're making, if you're the company's public, they'll probably pay around 10, 13,000 more. Um, let's keep going, keep going. Um, Industry-wise, you know, Banks, credit unions are paying less actually, which is which is fairly interesting. Um, do, do, do. I saw like a 0.3 somewhere in here. Okay, so uh, investment banks though paying more industry-wise. You know, between industry and sector, there's probably some multicollinearity because one's a subcategory of an, of another. Um, but you know, science, information, technology, not a surprise. Let's look at you know revenue for example. So companies that are five to ten million look like they pay are, are paying more, which is also very interesting. And then uh, you know, state-wise, obviously California, we know that. Let's see here, um, Connecticut, interesting. Um, I would expect DC to be one, but it is not here. Um, Florida, Spain, Las, uh, one through six, New Mexico. And then, oh, this is, okay. So, and then our, our simplified jobs, uh, as you expect, are all relevant. So analyst, everything except engineer uh, is relevant here to our model. And then seniority, senior is the only one that makes sense. Again, there's a reasonable amount of multicollinearity here. So I wouldn't put too much weight into this. This is more exploratory to understand the data. But when we go through and build some of our other models, we'll probably use this as a baseline to see how well it generalizes. So let's actually um, import 
the SK Learn linear model. So we're going to do a very, very similar thing here, except we're going to cross-validate it. So LM um, equals uh, linear, linear regression, and then we're going to do uh, LM.fit um, x train y train. Um, there we go. We actually don't have to fit it for the approach we're taking because we're going to use cross validation here. So let's do sklearn cross val score. And we're going to take this. All right. So let's include that here. Let's actually include that above. So what cross val score does is it goes through and it takes samples from the model. So it'll pull out a sample. Uh, and a validation set, uh, a sample of data and a validation set, it'll run the, the model on the sample and evaluate on the validation set that's held out to see if it generalizes okay. So again, this is like a, a mini train test split uh, and this helps us to see, you know, give us a good sense of like how the model is performing in reality. So this will be our baseline that we're, that we're gonna evaluate all of the other tests off of. So we're gonna do uh, cross, Val score, so LM um, X train, Y train, um, and then let's do, or is this scoring? Equals neg uh, mean, negative mean absolute error. So we're gonna use mean absolute error because I think it's the most representative. This will show how far on average we are off of our general prediction. Um, so, you know, if we're on average off by 21, that means we're on average off by $21,000. Um, and let's see what that looks like. Uh, I have to import it, that would make sense. Okay, so it looks like we're getting a couple pretty big values here, and I'm not sure why that is the case. Okay, well, I think maybe I was just putting it into two big, uh, two big sets, so we're getting some really skewed values. When I make the cross validation equal to three, we're getting that on average, we're off by around 20, 20, 20-ish uh, thousand dollars. So let's just take the mean of this, and then again, we can use this as a benchmark. So again, that's around 20, 20, uh, 20 thousand dollars off. So we were talking about how sparse that matrix is for a, a multiple linear regression. It's a little bit difficult to um, actually get good values from that because um, there is such limited data. A different regression model, a lasso, model a lasso regression, uh, normalizes those values and it should be better for our model. So what we use is a normalization term, alpha, and if alpha is zero, it's the exact same thing as the OLS um, multiple linear regression. As we increase alpha, it, it increases the amount that the data is smooth. So let's go up here, let's also import lasso. Oops, and that, that uh, term is gonna be called alpha in this. So um, so let's just look at this and it looks like alpha starts at, it defaults to one. So let's just try it at that and see how that cross validates as well. So let's do LML uh, equals lasso. And then we're just gonna copy this code and we're gonna use that same LML instead of LM. So 
So it looks like when it starts out, it is just a little bit worse. But now let's try a couple of different values of alpha and to see which one performs the best. So let's just make a loop. Uh, so let's make alpha a, a couple lists here. And then error. So we're going to do for i in range 1 to 100. And I'll walk through all of this code in a second. We're going to do lm l is equal to lasso alpha equals to i divided by 10. So we're going to do alpha values from point 0.1 all the way up to 10. Um, Let's, we want to actually alpha dot append i over 10. And then we're going to uh, errors, error dot append this average score. And we'll see what this actually looks like here. So we're just going to plt.plot alpha and error and see what this looks like. Okay, so it looks like maybe we should try this divided by 100 and see if we get something, something different because uh, it clearly really tapers off as we get into higher numbers, but it looks like closer to the bottom we're getting something decent. So there we go, that's something that we want to see. So it looks like this peaks maybe around point, uh, 0.2 as an alpha, and let's figure out exactly what that is. So uh, we can make error equal to um, tuple zip alpha alpha error. And so what that does is it just ties them together and makes it into a tuple, which is like a, a paired list that is not iteratable. And then we can just make this into a data frame, um, df error equals pd dot data frame uh, error columns equals alpha error and then we just want df there's definitely a quicker way to do this uh, dot uh, error equals to uh, max df error dot Nice. So we can see that an alpha of, you know, 0.13 is giving us the best error term, basically. Um, and, you know, with that, let's benchmark that again against our normal regression, where we're looking at, um, you know, an error of around 20. So again, we made a little improvement through tuning that model. Um, we can improve upon like model tuning in general with a grid search, and I'll show you how to do that after we create this random forest model. Okay, so again, we're gonna go SK learn random forest regressor. So as usual, we go to the examples here. So we're gonna import this. And I, we would expect a random forest to perform pretty well here, uh, especially because it's kind of a, uh, a tree-based decision process, and there's a lot of zero, one values. Uh, we also don't have to worry really at all about multicollinearity if we are, um, if we're using this type of model. So let's do RF equals random for regressor again, this is using all the defaults. We're not tuning this at all yet. Um, 
and we are going to um, our, uh, uh, well, let's actually just right off the bat get the cross foul score. So cross foul score equals to RF comma uh, X train Y train. And then we want to use the same scoring for each, same cross validation for each. There we go. Probably define it, that would make sense. Do a lot. Okay, so immediately we are getting better values. So we're getting, you know, an error um, that's, you know, basically four or five less than our, our previous best model. So, you know, the next thing we would want to do is actually go about um, tuning this. And so we're going to use you know, grid search to tune this. And what grid search does is you put in all the parameters that you want and you actually, uh, it runs all the models and it spits out the one with the best results. So we're going to go to here. So scale iron grid search CV. I'm going to click here and then we are going to just like before import grid search there and then what we need is the actual parameter set so this might eh, it shouldn't take too long with um, with a uh, random force regressor so let's look at the actual parameters that we can tune right so here we go so the number of estimate number of estimators right so what does that actually look like? N underscore N estimators. And then we want, um, let's do range um, 10 comma, um, we'll do 300 in steps of 10. So that's a reasonable one. Um, so if we want to try and generalize better, we can, um, we can try some different, uh, like different depths, like some of the trimming, the number of samples per leaf, um, like the weight fractions. So you can adjust all of these. Let's just focus on depth and, um, and the criterion. So we want let's just change this to criterion because we're we're using mean absolute error for ours. So let's see which one it actually uh, generalizes best with. Let's see how this example looks. So MSE. And then we want, um, yeah, let's, let's try a couple of the different max features. Um, so then we'll do again, max. Features colon auto screw log two. And you know, there's a couple different approaches. You can do a grid normal grid search or a randomized grid search. So if we use a normal grid search, it goes through all of the exhaustive um, scenarios, so you get kind of like a factorial of complexity. So we'd be doing, um, you know, all uh, all 30 of these times all two of those times all three of those that we selected. So it can get kind of big. So if you're hurting for time, you can do a randomized one where it goes through and and it, it, it takes a sample of them, which uh, is generally recommended if you have time. Um, 
I, I think being exhaustive with the grid search also makes sense. Um, there, uh, you know, as you can see, there's a ton of different things that we can optimize on or that we can experiment with. And I recommend kind of seeing, um, you know, seeing what, what you can adjust and, and what makes sense to you. Um, we're going to go back to the grid search and remember we want to set the, um, the actual score of this to be, um, to be a, uh, the negative mean absolute error. So it's important that we keep that in mind when we do it. So, uh, let me score. we want okay so let's just do this real quickly um, so um, yeah yes yes equals grid Search CV, make sure I tap with these. And then what we do is we include our estimator, which is our F, parameter grid, parameters. Now let's actually go through this again. Scoring equals neg. In absolute error, and then we want uh, CV equals three. I run this, and then we do, 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 do I know we have to fit it. Um, Where's our example here? Oh. Why do I forget how to fit this? Okay, yeah, there we go. And so do gs.fit x test, and x train, y train. And again, this is gonna take quite a bit. So I might give a little break in the Criterion. Probably spelled that wrong, that would be my guess. Maybe. Do, do, do. Criterion MSE MAE. Invalid parameter, uh, max filters. T U R E max features. There we go. Okay, so this is going to run for a while. Um, so probably take at least five minutes, so why don't I break on this and come back after we've tested it. Okay, so that took quite some time, um, but now we can see GS.best score. Let's see what that looks like. So it looks like we did a little bit better than our previous random forest. Looks like we're having some errors there. Um, you know, so we, we improved by a very, very small amount. Um, but let's see what that GS uh, best estimator looks like. See, so this will tell us all the parameters of that model. 
So it looks like the number of estimators at 170 was the best. Uh, max features auto and the criterion mean absolute error. That shouldn't be a surprise that that performed best when that is our evaluation function. So what we want to do for all of these is to actually use these different models to predict the uh, test set data and see if we get similar results. So we already have LM. So we're going to do Y pred. Oh, we're going to do, sorry, T pred equals to LM um, dot predict um, X train Y train. Uh, so let's make this tpred lm, and then we're going to make this tpred lml. So let's make this lasso. What did we find that our best results were for the lasso regression? I think it was like point one. Three. There we go. So um, and then lm l dot fit x train y train. Let's just make sure those are up to date. Let's make sure these are up to date, and then. We want to do um, tpred rf is equal to ps dot best estimator dot predict x train. Um, oh, so, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm doing uh, these trainings here. This is what we're doing for the um, y test. Sorry. So all of these will be Y test. Sorry guys, my brain's a little fried. Y test, and then we're predicting Y test. So we have to reshape these. So not sure why it necessarily does this. Sometimes the data just wants a specific fit type. Let's see if this fixes it. Should one mismatch dimension. Oh my goodness, Ken, I am such. Sorry guys, I'm off my game today. These should all be the X test. And then we're going to compare it against the Y test. So, so yeah. All right. And it worked. All right. So what we're going to do again is we're going to do a uh, mean Um, have I imported mean absolute error? Okay, so we're going to do from sklearn dot, dot metrics import mean mean absolute error. And we're going to do mean absolute error, and then it goes y test t pred lm so that should be the first one so that's our linear model how it performed t pred lml so we actually did worse with our lasso which is not ideal and then we're going to do t pred rf okay so i mean our random force is absolutely knocking this out of the park comparatively. Um, you know, sometimes 
it makes sense to try and combine a couple different models and see if you can actually improve your performance through that. So let's just take, um, so we're going to do tpred lm, LM times uh, t, uh, I'm sorry, uh, plus tpred uh, rf. See if this actually works. Divide we'll this by two. Okay, and then we're gonna try that. Instead of that. So what we did there, I mean, you would expect that it would be somewhere in between there, but sometimes one plus one equals three. Um, and one model that's maybe overtraining generalizes a little bit better. So, you know, it looks like again our, our tuned random forest model performs the best. We're actually able to get something that um, that produces results within you know ten thousand dollars, which which I think is pretty reasonable. And we know the estimate ranges on Glassdoor are fairly wide anyway. And that's probably why the ranges are so big, is because their model uses um, kind of the range or the or the or the error as as a band. Um, you know, one thing we could do to actually improve upon upon this, where we're just adding the two together and you know we're taking the average of them, is we could run that through another regression model and get actual um, like weights associated with it. So maybe an optimal. Um, an optimal ratio is, you know, we take 90% of the random forest and we take 10% of one of these other models. So I, I recommend you trying to explore that in your own groups. I, I like this type of ensemble approach better for uh, classification problems. So if you have three different models that all vote and you take the, the top two votes, uh, that that generally is an improved approach from there. So I'm gonna save this and we're gonna call this um, model building. And in the next one, we're gonna take this random forest model that we built and we're gonna try and productionize it. Following that, I'll show you how to write this up um, in the readme of the GitHub repo. So that this is something that, you know, if you did a similar project could go on your resume. Again, this is just an example. I don't expect you to do this same project, but this shows you the approach, the time, everything that goes into this. I mean, I think this is gonna take me five, six hours to put together completely, maybe even more than that. Uh, probably way more than that with the video editing. So uh, let's just go to our GitHub real quick. So git um, add git net atm. Um, built models for project glass door get push and then we're gonna have to set it upstream get push set upstream origin model building cool once that goes up we will go again uh, into our GitHub. We're gonna refresh it. We're going to go to the model building where we'll have some additional files. We're gonna um, compare and create a pull request. Um, and then we go and merge pull request, confirm merge. So that's it for today's project. I mean, as you can see, there's so many different approaches you can take. There's so many more models you can build uh, that that each one of these steps can can take a full day, a full week, e even longer. And part of the project is not you know trying all of the models, but it's trying the ones that are most effective, trying the ones that that make sense to you, and being able to tell a story about why you chose specific ones. You know, for example, with the linear regression versus the lasso regression, even though the lasso performed worse in this use case, the lasso regression should make more sense 
because there's a normalization effect and we have kind of a sparse matrix. The random forest also makes a ton of sense because we have a lot of zero one values uh, and you know that is a good use case because we're using a bunch of decision trees. So again, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part, uh, part six of the series where I start building uh, you know, the productionized model, we make this into an API. Have, uh, have fun watching this and good luck on your data science journey.